sacks. Get, get, get. Alright, hello everyone, this is Josh, also known as Yashu. You're just tuning into episode 93 of the TOY Talks podcast. You know, you can get this like on all platforms, Spotify, Apple Podcasts, YouTube, Buzzsprout, much more. We just have the Patreon as well too, so if you want to like sign up to become a member, you know, check out exclusive content from there, you can just like sign up from the link in my bio, select whatever tier, and you know, we're just going to get it started right here. So, I feel like there is like no introduction uh, right here too, because we have like Rexdale's uh, finest, you know, Valentino, who's been dropping a lot of uh, fire lately, has done like a lot for the city and all that, so yeah, yeah, welcome yeah. to the platform, man. Let's go, my G. How you been, man? I'm do- I've been doing all right, man. Like, I feel like, you know, you're like the people's like champ in a way and all that too, just for the block and all that, and just like from what I'm seeing and all that too, because you have like the OGs from the city, like Pilla, like Pyrex, like Mula, yeah. like all those people, like Haji Basto too, but I feel like with you, you know... Like, you're, like, the people's, like, champ in a way, too, with, like, what you're putting out, too, and, like, you know, what you've got, like, going on, too. So, it's, like, kind of, like, amazing to see and all that, you know? I appreciate that. Even just to hear that stuff, I really actually appreciate that stuff because a lot of stamps, there's a lot of, you know, name brands and shit yeah. like that out there, too. And, you know, you're mentioning yeah. a lot, so yeah. I appreciate it, my G. Because I've had, like, a lot of people from, like, Rexdale, like, on the platform, but to, uh, like, to, like, Tao Picasso. Yeah. And, like... Tao, I used to work with him. Uh, true, and yeah, then like yeah. G Miller and all that, and like this other guy, like TSH movement and all that too. Like, yeah, yeah. and like just like seeing like the whole like scene and all that too. It is kind of like amazing to see like with Rexdale being on top now and all that, you know. So, definitely, definitely. It's lovely. I love to see it too, you know. Yeah, for sure, man. And you know, I just want to get it like from the jump too, because you know, even growing up there, like what was it like, you know, growing up like in the late 90s, like early 2010s and all that too, you know? It was fun, like, you know, I can't say like. And a man or anybody was on a super grunge or, or anything so young, you know. We were still kids at one point, you know. Obviously, when they got to high school and shit like that, like it, t- it gets different, you know. You see certain things, go through certain things, and life changes, you know. The ball starts rolling after that, and it's either you still remain a kid or you turn into a man. However it goes, you know. You still learn lessons. You still... We don't take L's to learn lessons, you know. So, it's like, yeah. shit happens. That's all I can really say. It was, it was rough, you know. Rough upcoming in the wrecks, obviously. Yeah. Well, that's just what it is. It's yeah. small too. Everyone knows each other. So as soon as something happens, somebody knows somebody's business, you know? Yeah, no, exactly. Because like, even like Rexdale, like it was like, kind of like documented like in the movie uh, Doomstown, which is like on like CTV yeah, yeah, and all that too. That. Yeah, yeah. So how did you uh, react to that movie and all that? Well, like, I already knew about the movie coming out and whatnot because I, I have a homie that's in that movie, right? Quincy Nanataki, actually. He's he's in a he's in a lot of shit right now. He's a DJ right now in the city too. Shout out Shrimp Tempura. You know what I mean? So he was in that movie. Um. He was playing the little kid, you know, that that the older heads are trying to, like, you know, bring in or whatever. He was seeing a lot of shit and whatnot. So it's just like seeing the movie on TV after he was telling the man, I'm like, yo, dog, I'm on, I'm on a show. Watching you guys see it's good to be on, um, I don't remember if it was on CP24. No, they didn't put it on Channel 24. I think it was time. CTV. Like, CTV, yeah. right? They put it yeah. on. It was a one a one night where, like, the whole city could watch it and shit yeah. like that. So, yeah, when, when I seen it, I was like, damn, I fuck with this. Like, this is, it's, it's new. It's, it's different. But, you know, I guess a lot of people were kind of misconstrued about it because it wasn't really, like, the story of the hood. Yeah. You know, and they took all their details and whatnot and put it into their own kind of format and made True. something different about it. But yeah. it's still lit. It's still nice. Like, kind of like a toronto like, version of the movie. Yeah. Like, not like a block, like, version. Actually. Yeah, exactly. They didn't put too much that people shouldn't know about, you know? So, yeah. I like how they did it, but it was kind of like, shit, it should have been more authentic at least, you know? Yeah, nah, for sure, man. And, you know, like, knowing that the area is, like, a well-known, like, spot for music from, like, the Jellystones, like, the Illies, the Pillabies, the Moolas. Yeah. To, like, the younger cats, like, Haji and, like, all that and all that. So what made that block notable and legendary when it comes to, like, the music and the arts and all that? To be honest, like, it's just like you said right now, like, it's, see how right now we have an era of, like, a lot of the youths, them, the uh, people even my age and shit like that, like, Pillar and and Moolah and all these guys and shit like that, you know, it's like, the music speaks for itself, you know, so I remember back then I was listening to these two guys, Illy and Payback, rest in peace, because those are the two niggas for me at least that were put it on for the Rex, you know, before I was listening to Jelly Stone and those guys, big up Jelly, you know what I mean, big up all the man and shit too, but it's just like, that was, that was it for me, because I was living in the area around it, you know, I can't say I was fully there, but just because the friends that I had around and shit like that, my mom didn't want me outside with certain people and shit, so it's like I'm seeing a different lifestyle. I'm chilling with different people. And it's just like, whoa, 
it's it's different. And the music when I'm seeing it, it's like, yo, niggas is really just in the basement recording music and whatever else, you know? <laughs> yeah, it's like, it's crazy, yeah. but the talent was always there, you know? It's like freestyling amongst each other and shit, like more as making fun of each other who could roast each other the hardest. And that's where it went from. But at least you could do that and still be boys and still be cool after. A lot of situations where people weren't boys after and shit just because off of freestyling the ciphers and shit like yeah. that, boy. That's where it came from, like the rawness and everything about Rexdale. It's like, yeah, yeah, this is real. If you were there, you were there. If you if you know, you know. Yeah, no, likewise, you know, and like even like around that era too, like just like even with the music, like I noticed, like you might have like listened to like a lot of like more like East Coast stuff uh, back then. So yeah, like was it like kind of like more of like the stuff you're like listening to like growing up, or were you like listening to like other stuff and all that? I was listening to a lot of other stuff too. Uh, I also had friends in the East End and whatnot too, right? So it's like. I was listening to everything. Top of that, my mom do she would listen to a lot of different music, not just hip hop and whatever. Like she'd be on her pop, on her jazz. You know what I mean? I'm listening to Spanish music, cumbia, bachata, reggaeton, this and that, whatever. You know what I mean? So it's like it's a long line of music that I just go from and hear. It's it's like it's kind of like a love, you know. It's like shoot, I have songs that I don't like, obviously because of the genre and whatnot, but I have songs that I love in that same genre too. Yeah, and likewise, and, like, I know that you're, like, fully, like, Colombian in a sense, too, so, like, even growing up, like, Colombian, like, what was, like, that whole, like, household and, like, culture, like, you know, just, like, growing up and just, like, the norms and all that? Yeah, it was nice, like, you know, Spanish household and whatnot, you know? Um, it's just, <laughs> I guess, it's the same thing as anybody else's household, or, like, you know, like, whoever is, like, West Indian or Caribbean or even you're white or European or whatever and you come from back home or some shit like that, you know how it's like, even down here in Canada, there's... There's a rough lifestyle about how people grow up in family. They get together from that roughness, that that tough love and whatnot, you know? So it's just like, with me, it's just like, you know, Spanish food every single morning, dinner and this and that, like, yeah, yeah. chilling with family, you know, you have gatherings and whatnot. But it was more like we're in the hood, you know? So, like, there will be a lot of Spanish and blacks, even the whites and Indian and this and that. Like, my mom was friendly with everybody and shit, you know? So we'd have gatherings and we'd have different people around us and whatnot. And they're getting into the the mood too, like, you know, they're enjoying the dancing and the food and whatnot. Everybody will cook food for each other and shit. I remember those type of vibes, you know? But growing up, like, I was only in Colombia for, like, two, three years. Until, I, sorry, four years. I was, like, four or five years old until I came to Canada. So, yeah, the, the upbringing really was just, like, back home country lifestyle, you know? It was beautiful, super beautiful. But then I came up here and my whole mind switched up. Yeah. yeah. Not because, like, I know, like, the 80s and 90s, it was, like, more, like, the cartel stuff going on with, like, Escobar and all that, yeah. and, like, Griselda. And I then... think that's why my people, them, left, yeah. because there was too much going on down there, and then yeah. we just came up here to Canada. It was more safer, you know? Yeah. And, like, for me, like, what I've noticed is that, like, growing up, like, there wasn't, like, a lot of, like, Latinos and, like, other people that growing up, like, back then, but now it's, like, more yeah. prevalent. Like, if you go to, like, Dufferin Lore, like, you'll see, like, a lot a lot of Mexicans and all that. Yeah. If you go to, like, the Jane Strip, you're going to have, like, a lot of people from different cultures from Ecuador, Colombia, yep, yep. Peru, all that. So, yeah. Yeah, I see it a lot, too. Still, like, Wilson Strip, there's a bunch of Latinos go up more. So even, like you said, on the Jane, like, they're, they're all over right now, you know? Bathurst. I'll even Eglinton, because Eglinton is more like where the Jamaicans are and whatnot. But it's like, you see a lot of Spanish people up there, too. I'm seeing a lot of Mexicans yeah. and Colombians and Ecuadorians up here now, too. Yeah. So, no. It's crazy, still. So. Sure, no, I definitely agree, too. And, you know, just like even getting, like, within the start, like, in music, like, what inspired you to, like, take this, like, seriously and to, like, rap and become, like, an artist and all that? Well, like, I guess I, I just always love music. I love, like, to, to spit. I love to just... You know, rap out loud and shit like that. But it was more just people around me telling me, take it serious, take it serious. Yo, you're not serious about this. Yo, you should actually do something. Yo, you just need the right promotion. Yo, like, this is not, this is like, I don't know. I've always had my own studio. I've always had my own shit together. You know what I mean? Like, I got my own, like, little Pro Tools set up and this and that. So it's like, I've always had it in front of me from a kid. Like, I actually learned from these guys back then Um. <laughs> A2H, Addicted to the Hustle. And I remember those guys, they had their own setup and whatnot. I see them at the basketball court. And I asked them, like, Yo, how you guys record? Which, which program are you using or whatever, you know? Got to learn the one tool from one of them or whatever. They told me what's up. And then, yeah, I just went from there, you know? Like, yeah, you know what I mean? Like, just, just simple shit yeah. like that. And it kind of, like, gave that drive to start, like, everything, like, independently and all that. Basically, like, that. I say it started, like, around grade 7, grade 6, grade 7, grade 8, going into high school. Okay. Cool. Yeah. Yeah. No, nah, that's what's up. And like, as far as like influences, uh, like who do you have like in terms of influences, and you know who do you want to work with someday? My influences right now, to be honest, 
Let's just say I keep it old school, you know, like Biggie, Pac, Big Psych. Like, that, that, I could go on for days of the old school shit. Nipsey, you know what I mean? I have to put Nipsey up there. Chinks, Drugs. Yo, there's there's a lot right now, but even for my top, my top, top people, um, Jada, Styles, P, Sheet, Lou, so the locks, obviously, you know? Uh, there's a bunch of bar spitters, but it's just, yo, yeah. to work with right now, I'd want to work with Styles P, but I, I think I recently heard, like, he's he's not even doing music like that anymore. Some shit, he's just selling juices and whatnot. So it's kind of like, damn, at least in one time in life, I want to get to meet the nigga, you know? Just have a convo at least or something, but right now, I'm kind of like just working by myself. I don't even want to work with nobody right now, unless the opportunity comes, you know? Yeah. yeah. I definitely see you with like Millie's, like Albie Al and all that. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. Sue Surf, like Kerr. Sue like Surf, that's my yeah. guy, yo. Yeah. yeah, he's not out. He's not out, is he? Uh, I think he's still like in uh, prison for a bit. Yeah, so, so yeah. free up, free up, free up. Yeah, even Mozzy too. Like I think you and Mozzy would do Ma- like a sick Mazzy's track and all that. Dangerous. Yeah. I bump a lot of Mozzy myself. Yeah, so he's super dangerous. Shout yeah. out Blood still. Yeah, yeah. Nah, for sure, man. And you know, I want to get to know more about like this like whole style that you have. Do you have the whole like up life and like stay connected thing? Yeah. Like mainly from like the IG and all that type of stuff too. And I've heard that from the tracks too. So yeah. how do those come about? And like tell me more about the meanings of like those like brands and all that. Okay, so Stay Connected was more like, it, it used to be called Blue Jay City Entertainment, but I just, I don't know, I kind of stopped that, turned the Blue Jay City, I, I turned the Blue Jay City thing into like a slogan more, so I, sometimes I might try to be like, it's just a Blue Jay City thing, doggy, or whatever, you know, so I just use it like that, but I switched it up and I just made Stay Connected because I wanted something for a business, right? So yeah, I wanted to build up whatever, try to try to get some grants for a to, to build up and get a studio and whatever. And I ended up doing that, right? So that's where I got Stay Connected from because I actually just wanted to build up and get my own shit together. Uh, Uplife, that's just more like the, the family, the team. I mean, I have a couple of my dogs and one of them was supposed to be here, but he, he already got some shit to do it. But yeah, Uplife is just a saying, you know? It's just like, even if, like, say like, yo, I hail you up and we're about to leave, I'll be like, ah, Uplife, my G. And just keep it moving. So at least it's an uplifting thing. And just, you know, I'll see you later, but up. Yeah, you know, up yourself. No matter what, don't keep yourself down. It's always uplift. But that's more the team thing, the family thing or whatever. Yeah, you know, every time we just say, yeah, uplift, uplift. Don't know. Yeah, no, like I've heard the tracks and everything else too. So it is like kind of like interesting too because it's kind of like more like a saying, like, yeah. a man- like a mannerism too. So like I definitely see it like being more like within like an environmental uh, type thing, you know. Facts. Yeah, no. Yeah, yeah. And, you know, in terms of, like, you know, the studio and all that, like, what would, it, like, a day in the studio be like? Sure. To be honest, it could be exciting, boring, exciting, or just boring. Or, 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 you know what? It's, like, depending on what I'm doing, what I'm trying to do, and who I'm doing it with, you know? Because for me, I like to work, spe- like, on a specific timing, specific workflow. I like to get shit done because it's, like, we're going to be in there smoking, drinking, and just doing whatever. It's like, bro, what are we doing? Are we writing? Are we going to go in the booth and spit or whatever? And sometimes people are into that, but it's like, you're just wasting time, wasting time, wasting time. And studio time costs, you know? So, it's, it's yeah, for me, for the for the most part, it's fun. But then I get serious too, you know? It's like, what 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 are we doing right now, you know? Yeah, not yeah. sure. And, like, as far as, like, studio rules and that type of stuff too, do you have, like, certain rules, like, you know, not having, like, too much people and all that too, or just only, like, you, the engineer, the producer and all that, or...? Depends on where I'm at, right? So I have my own setup at home. So obviously, if I'm at home, like, I just tell the one, two people to come through. Like, I tell my boy Seven, he usually goes and records at other people's spots, right? But if you're coming to check me, it's like, I know he'll probably come with a one, two of the dogs them. So I don't mind, like, a three, four people around or whatever. But like I said, it depends, right? So now if I go uh, rent out a studio for the night or during the day, and I know I could have people over there. I wouldn't mind to have a bunch of people in there. Or whatever. I could still work. I could still, like, stay focused and whatnot. People behind me or, like, partying or doing whatever doesn't distract me. Still, I'm more the one even saying, yo, I'll smoke after, I'll drink after. Uh, you know, let me just work on this. Make sure your voice sounds good. Because if I don't do this, you know, you could have a fucked up record session. <laughs> <laughs> nah, facts. Like, I think, like, I've spoke with, like, a lot of, like, engineers and producers and people who run studios. And there is, like, a lot of, like, fact to it. Like, even, like, with artists as well. Because, yeah. like, they'll have, like, certain, like, stuff that they'll do. Like, put a candle on or just, like, have, like, some, like, weed or licks or, like, do it at home yeah. too. So, yeah, yeah. it all depends on the vibe and all they know. So Yeah, exactly. I like to smoke my weed and, and drink my liquor, like, when I'm done mixing the track. 
And then now when I spark my spliff and I'm and I'm listening to the track and I'm drinking, it's like I'm catching my own like little vibe off it. It's kind of like a therapy for me because I already have my limits and shit like that when I'm smoking, when I'm drinking and whatnot. So it's just like, you know what? When I'm in the studio, I'm not going to do all that. But when I'm done, definitely spark a spliff and take a one-two shot just so I can get in the vibe. And now I feel it for myself. You know what I mean? Yeah, no, that's facts, man. And, you know, I've, like, listened to, like, a lot of the stuff, too. Like, recently, I was just, like, listening to Ki- the Kitchen King Freestyle, which is, like, also pretty dope, too. But then, yeah. like, a majority of your stuff is, like, mainly, like, singles and all that, too. With, like, yeah. no album, like, none like that. Are you more, like, a client, like, inclined to drop, like, an album, so- an album soon? Yeah, I am. Actually, I'm working on something called um Public Affairs. So Public Affairs is going to be more, like, entwined with um a short a short story film. It's going to be also an... I'm going to make it a tape first. I'm going to drop a tape, more like an EP to be exact. And then I'm going to drop an album going right after that. And then after that, that's when I'm going to make a TV series about public like public affairs. I wanted to drop the name Politics Boy. I was talking to my team and they're like, yo, that's, that's too much. Like People are going to see that and be like, it's just another movie. Or whatever, it's just another TV show or whatever, whatever. So I decided to go with the name Public Affairs and I looked up what are other meanings for politics? And I'm seeing public affairs and this and that, and I'm like, oh, this is crazy. Like, that will be lit. As soon as people see that, they want to click it, want to see what's it, what it's about. It's going to be interesting as fuck. I know people are going to be into it. So, yeah, that's what I'm working on really right now. So it's like I have a lot of things that I have in store, but just trying to keep it low-key and work instead yeah. of... Sure. Yeah, you know what I mean? So, like, the TV show, is it going to be more on Tubi or, like, on other No, I'm going to just put it on YouTube for for right now, you know? I want to get the crowd reaction. I want to see what everybody says about it and whatnot. So, at least that way I could just build off of that, you know? I'm going to have a lot of people that are in the city, like, certain rappers and actors and whatnot involved into this too, right? So, I'm going to put a lot of time into it, but... Yeah, not, not nothing like Tubi or anything yet, but, you know, yeah. that's the plan to get there yeah. and then even more. Yeah, like, Tubi's, like, kind of, like, the bag in a sense because, like, a lot of people are kind of, like, Tubi, famous yeah. nowadays, too. More like an American thing, but, like, I know, like, Toronto, it's, like, a lot more YouTube and all that, too. Facts, so. facts. Yeah. And, like, from what I've noticed, like, from the tracks, too, you've worked with, like, a lot more, like, with women and, like, you know, like, people who aren't, like, from that life and all that, too. Like, yeah. I could say, like, with Ice and all that, too, with yeah. Chenjin and all that. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. All those people. So, how was that experience, like, you know, working with those, t- like, types of artists as opposed to who you would usually, like, work with and all that? I mean, it's kind of like the same thing, you know? It's like, everybody everybody has, like, a character that they play when they come into this hip-hop rap world. You know what I mean? So it's just like, for me, I'm Valentino. So whenever people expect Valentino, it's just like, I could just be myself because I'm like this anyways. You know what I mean? A lot of people, like, when I work with them, I can't tell if they're being themselves or if they're playing this artist or whatever it is that they're doing, you know? Because a lot of people tend to do that in real life anyways. I mean, people can't be themselves or look in the mirror and be themselves. But working with these people that I worked with, it's been normal. Like, they've been good. I've been good to them. They've been good to me. So it's like, I guess the reciprocation just goes both ways and whatnot, right? So, but like you said, um, with women, right? So when it comes to working with women and whatnot, it's like, I actually see that they work harder than men. Like, when it comes to the music thing. <laughs> and I'm in a studio or like, we'll send tracks back to each other and the shit gets done quick. Quick, fast. But guys, it's just like, you could finish a track, whatever, and then they'll keep it locked in their folders or whatever for, like, forever. And yeah. you're wondering, what are we doing with this? What's happening? Well, I don't know. But then communication goes a long way, too. So yeah. it could be me or it could be, like, yeah. yo, well, what are we doing? I don't know. Maybe I ask too much. Yeah. <laughs> I yeah. don't know. I definitely know what you mean because I've seen, like, a video from, like, Dub J and, like, other people talking about, like, the women, like, not dropping music and all that. And, like, I've heard, like, there's, like, people, like, you know, Zentry and, like, Brooklyn Honey. Yeah. From, like, that they... Shout out Zentry. Yeah yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. So how did you uh, feel, like, when they, like, gave, like, those responses? And do you feel like it's kind of, like, the more accurate response from, like, what they've said? Or is like, kind of, like, different? Yo, like, it's accurate. It's really accurate. I seen, I seen what Brooklyn Honey said, too. I seen what Century was saying. Everything's accurate, but I'm my own artist. I'm doing my own thing, like, even to see how females are going about it and whatnot, it's just like, sucks. Step the fuck up and, yo, <laughs> what you want to do? Like, you know, you want to be a ball and shot car? <laughs> it's really, that's yeah. the life. It's hip-hop. It's rap. It's, it's challenging. That's the whole point about it, right? I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna say like I don't support it. I support them fully. Century Sam knows that for a fact because every time she has her shit popping off, and I have to come out and support. It's the same thing with Team Two Four Seven. She's a woman too, and she also um, 
she plays a big part in in the city for our women out here too, um, empowering and whatnot, right? So it's just like again, I'm a man, you know, and it's just like I can't speak for something that I'm not involved in because I never really seen. Also, I don't know much about it either, right? I'm kind of out the loop, so I never really seen much about what they're saying. I seen a one two, and I heard a one two, but it's still like yo, it sucks, like it's fucked up, but. Yeah. We're gonna have to just really push through and and put a little bit more effort in because everybody's trying to do it. It's not just those women, you know, because they probably have women that are probably bashing other women too. Yeah. It's not just men. Oh, that's facts. Like I definitely agree too. Um, yeah. And to even like speak more on the gist of it uh, too, because like I know you're affiliated with NLMG and with Team T- Real Estate Two Four Seven. So how did those come about? How was that experience? You know, like being a part of those brands and like working with the people like around them. Okay. So yeah. Um, I met Team. I met Team Two Four Seven. Uh, first, uh, actually, I can't. I DM'd her because I seen that she did an interview with um, I don't know if it was the Man I'm Show or somebody. I can't remember, but I seen an interview and I seen that she was talking about real estate and whatnot, right? But then I'm seeing that she does real estate for the rappers in the city, a lot of rappers in the city. So it's like holy shit! Like I didn't know like that's what she's on. So I seen that she was doing a show. I just messaged her right away and I'm like, yo, I'm trying to get on your show. My name's so and so. You know, can I get on it? She hit me she hit me back right away and said, Yeah, yo, we're doing a show over here. Followed. See what you see what you're about. Yeah, let's go from there. I went there. Um, that's when I met um a couple other guys from LNMG, uh, Ghost and those guys and whatnot. But I was more uh flexing with my boy, uh, Seven True. You know what I mean? So other than that, it was just yeah, just from there, just kept on doing shows after that. It was like shows after shows after show. I just going there, seeing her. That's how like the relationship started. I'm sure, and I guess she put you like onto game like about like the whole like music thing and all that too, and just the scenes and all that. Hell nah, that was all me. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> like I, don't get it twisted. Like she, she's good. She's Gucci. Like she knows what's going on with the scene, but I already knew what was going on for myself. Like I just needed somebody to put me in that position. Okay. Because even when we have talks about certain shit, she's like. Holy fuck, you've been in this game for a minute. Like, yeah. It's like, yeah, for sure, for sure. Yeah. But she's also knowledgeable about the game too because remember, she's she's not, she's a real estate agent. You know, she's not just playing with the rap game. She's also playing with the real estate game too. So it's like, she's also making yeah. that making that quota and making sure that like yeah. everything's intact, everything's lined up. Yeah. Because I know she has like helped like a lot of people like in some ways too, like Chromas, uh, BizLoke and all that. Mm-hmm. Um, like, I know, like, with uh, Persuasion, like, Cienzo and all that, KG, YBA, yeah, 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 yeah. like, a lot of people, too. So, it is, like, kind of, like, amazing on what she's, like, doing for, like, the people, like, in the city, too, and, like, you know, providing, like, any opportunities, too. Because, like, now, like, I've seen, like, a photo with, like, YBA and JI and all that, and, like, yep, yep. a lot of people are also, like, doing features with 38 Special and being a part of, like, these, like, sections, like, with Benny, with Conway and all that, yeah, too. exactly. So, it is, like, amazing to see and all that, like, what she's doing and all that. D- definitely, yeah. Yeah, I'm trying to get out there myself. Trying to get out there myself, man. She's she's waiting for me to get out there with them. So, hopefully, just now. Yeah, for sure, man. And you know, like I've noticed, you're more affiliated with like the drum, the drip room six, and all that too. Like I see like a good connection from there. So yeah, how did that come about, and how is that experience? You know, having a focal support like a uh, blog page, like be a focal support like within your career and all that. Yeah. So basically, it kind of goes in twine with um two four team two four seven. So, just like say. From now, so it's all on wax and whatever. Um, so Team Two Four Seven and Drip Room, they're basically like my micromanagers. You know what I mean, so I get micromanaged by them. Uh, whenever I'm about to release anything, whenever I'm about to do anything, whatever, I run it by them first. You know, so at least I know what's going on. I could keep up with any new updates and whatnot. Cause Drip Room is he's a blog page, you know, but he does his dirt. He he he's actually working and gives people what they want when they need it. You know. And with Team 2-4, she also, like, guides me in places where I say, okay, no, this is the right place to be. You should be with these people. And this is where, where you're going to go and this is what's going to happen. So it's more like, I guess I did a one, two shows after those ones, after I met um 2-4. Met Drip. And it was just on from there because I think there's somebody that was supposed to perform first at one of his shows. And they didn't come. So he's like, yo, do you want to, like, get on the stage and perform? Uh, yeah, f- f- why not, yo? Let, let me do this, and then from there it was good. You know, I actually set it up. It was nice. Everybody was having a nice time, and then that's when everybody else wanted to perform because they're like, "Oh shit, yo!" Like, "Yo, you did good, yo!" Now watch me after I'm hearing a bunch of rappers me- meeting new people. So yeah, it was definitely dope with him. Yeah, not for sure because I know with like certain media pages too, like they can only go as far as like helping like certain people and all that too, and then others that 
are putting on for, for like everyone and all that too so do you even feel like even like with the media and like the blog pages do you feel like they're giving like a good name in like toronto music and like urban journalism or would you say it would be like a little bit like different notice yeah my my i have a different thought about blog pages when i say to my music too because it's like it's funny to me you know like i don't know how much i don't know how much of these people they are posting up for free or doing for free or whatnot to me it's more of a favoritism thing because i can see that with almost anybody and anybody i'd probably do it myself like somebody would probably if they see my page that i get like 10k views in like one hour they'd probably be like yo can i can I get on your page? Can you promote me or whatever? And then as soon as I hit them with the, yo, it's, here's my list of prices. <laughs> They're looking at me like a dickhead already. Like, yo, dog, I just seen you post up this person, this person, this person. What, did they, did they pay you? Or whatnot? And then you just have to think about it, right? But people take that whole, like, blog page thing and getting promo and doing this out of context, too. They misconstrued that whole thing because it's like, duh, you're supposed to pay a promo page. Though you're supposed to pay a blog page. That's what gets you your views. That's what gets you this and gets you that. But it's kind of weird now, especially in Toronto, because now they do it for clout. They do it for more like, oh, who's more popping, popular, who's more lit, who has more ops, and who's getting killed, and who's getting this, and who's getting that, and which bitch just slapped which bitch, which guy just did this to who, and, you know, who's getting what on camera. Like, it's, it's crazy right now. Toronto's actually on some entertainment media shit right now, yeah. if you ask me. But at the same time, it's stupid because it's all a bunch of weird shit. It's not yeah. like it's cool. It's not like, yeah, this guy deserved it or this person yeah. deserved that, you know? It's like it's just kind of like more of a way for like view chasing because I think there was like also like a one podcast one time that got exposed for kind of like view chasing for a bit too. Like they reach out to this oh, one shit. big artist. Like I think you might have known this, like this one big artist, like, hey, like, do you want to, like, do, like, an interview and all that, too? The artist asks, like, how much? Uh, we'll do it for free. But, yeah. like, if you want to, like, talk about, like, this person. Like, we had, like, this person on and, like, he was, like, dissing you and all that. And then I think that guy, like, kind of, like, exposed, like, the platform. <laughs> like, you know what I mean and yeah, all that, too. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. So I feel like, you know, at times, like, they'll play, like, yeah, they cat play and mouse. Those, yeah. yeah, they play those games. Yo. It's crazy. It's just, you're just tugging the tail on the tiger, yo. You know, trying to see what happens, but that's them, you know? So for yeah. me, I, I, I see that they're, like, they're good. They're good to keep around and to do shit. Like, when you want your music out, you yeah. want a video out or whatever, yeah, pay them. Yeah. But they, if these guys are going to ask for, like, a bill of 50 to two bills to three bills just to have this shit up on the story or whatnot, like, you know what I mean? Like, it's like, at least give me my money's worth type thing, yeah. you know? Like, DJ Snoopy, shout out him. You could literally pay him, like, a, I think it's like 20 to 30 to 50 bucks or whatever, and he runs your music on his page. The whole day, whether it's his story or his front page, you know, live on IG. Yeah. So it's like there's a lot of guys like that. There's DJs, there's there's actual promoters, there's actual people out here that have numbers up, yeah. you know, and you could pay these guys. Yeah. And they'll make sure that your shit gets out there and play. Yeah. Like Studio of Legends, like they're doing like the whole freestyle thing now, Quota exactly. Toronto. Like they're kind of like doing the thing to give artists like a platform. And it's like artists that aren't even at like a big level yet. Like these are like kind of like everyone within that same range too so it is like kind of like amazing to see like what yeah. others are doing like in a way too so facts 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 yeah i wanted to ask like this one quick thing like how did the whole like fashion show thing happen like and how was that experience you know hosting like a fashion show and like having like brands like come through to showcase like their designs and all that yeah that was beautiful to be honest like i had an idea for my birthday right um it, like i'm just super realistic when it comes to things too so I had an idea for my birthday where, like, I just wanted to have a fashion show, you know? I wanted to see some fly classy shit and whatnot. All, you know, amazing clothes and people just doing their thing, modeling and whatnot. Like, I just wanted something different. Um, Team 247, you know, she kind of, like, ran with it and did her thing. And she set everything up. But shout out to her because, remember, like, there's a lot of things that come with it, too. Like, funding and whatnot. And a lot of these things cost money and shit. So, like, I got to thank her for even, you know dealing with a lot that she did because she didn't have to do all of that especially like for me like for anybody you know what i mean it's just like yo she she did it up and we both worked on it uh my boy seven over here he was actually one of the people coordinating the fashion show too so he was actually involved in it too modeling and whatnot um yeah you know what i mean it was just it just came about because it was my birthday and i just wanted to do something different you know turn 31 so it was just like i'm not gonna be a kid no more and just 
go to the club and pop bottles and whatever, whatever. I did that, and then after that, I ended up going to the club to see strippers and all of that good stuff. Yeah. Yeah. Do you feel like we'll get more events like that or even, like, a fest or, like, a showcase and all that? Yeah. The next one that I want to do is actually, like, kind of like a part two, but I'm going to name it something else. But I'm definitely going to do it again. I just want to make it more professional, more, like, on a... On something like involving the city and involving a lot of big names too, you know. Hopefully, if I can, I can get those sponsors. I can get a couple people to get be involved in, you know. Just be like, yeah, you know what? I see what you're doing. Let's try to take it up a notch and try to do that. Nah, facts, you know. And you know, I was actually checking out like one of your tracks too, and like there was like a line that said, you know, like I performed in front of like Shakhtar, like freestyled in front of like Socrates and all that too. Yeah. So was that like pretty true and all that? And like, what was like the backstory and the yeah, experience behind it? That was actually. I can't remember which show that was, but I was opening up for Shot Clear. Yeah, I opened up for Shot Clear. Um, shoot, shout out Usual Suspects, yo, because they're over there too. Those are two legends out here. I've been doing their thing from time. Those are the OGs out here. Um, yeah, I was with them. I was with some other people too, but I was with them, Usual Suspects, and they're like, yo, I didn't know you, you was performing or doing your thing or whatever, whatever. So I had to perform, got to do my thing. I ended up freestyling with a couple people on stage. Just setting up, setting the night proper, you know? And then we go to the back and we see Socrates, we see ch- Chocolate just chilling. These guys are taking shots, drinking, um, eating food. Like, it was lit. Like, so I'm just there like, fuck. Yo, I have to freestyle for this guy. <laughs> so I just make my way and just, you know, hailing him up. I see Socrates, I hailed him up. I gave them like a nice 20 second freestyle. It wasn't nothing crazy, you know? But when they heard me, they're like, yo, where were you? Did you go on stage? And I'm just like, ah, oh, you guys didn't get to see me perform. You know what I mean? So I'm pretty sure if they did, they would have seen what was up. But yeah, I forgot to freestyle for them. And they're just telling me, yo, next time we see you, like, definitely, like, we're going to we're gonna bring you in, like, when when you're around a performance or a stage or whatever, like, yo, make sure to link us, make sure to highlight us. So I'm like, all right, bet, cool. You know? So I made my way with that. Even they had, um, Chocolate, um, got a link up on Instagram and stuff like that too, but just it's me, you know, like I got to keep in touch with people and make sure I'm on point, consistent with it too, because consistency is key, right? Oh, for sure. And like, did they give like any like feedback on like just like the freestyle and all that too, like on how to be big, like in music and all that or? Yeah, w- I, I can't remember if it was Socrates or Chocolate that said it, but they're like, um, minimize on the swearing, you know, like that's basically it because the, w- the wordplay I, I already knows on point, but they're like, yeah, minimize on the swearing and you'll be all right. Because it's like, it's cool here and there to whatever, you know, to swear and say a one, two bad words and whatnot. But I say you can minimize on that and just come clever with punchlines and flows and metaphors and shit like that. Then it'll sound better on the song, you know. That's like yeah. lyrical exercise. Or like, you know, like rechanging like words and all that. Too. Exactly. Because like, like I think artists like in the past, like what they would do is that they would like do a, like for a clean version, like they would say like the other word like frig or yeah. like lady and that type of stuff too. Yeah. Just to kind of make it like more friendly and yep, yep, it would still yep. be like a vibe too in a sense too. So. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. I yeah. definitely feel that. Yeah. 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 Do you ever feel like, you know, music has gotten like a lot like worse nowadays to like even with the whole like dissing the dead, smoking on this like stuff going on in music? Yeah. It got watered down. Like, it really did get watered down. Music just, it, it it don't hit like before. The reason why it hits now is because it's like, it's fact rap. Like, you know, it's like, you got to check in with these stats, statuses now and you have to see what's going on, like, for real. Like, right now, if you were to hear about a rapper, right away, you're picking up your phone, YouTube, Rap Boy Ninja, uh, The Man I'm Show, whoever else, like, all these platforms that have the mix-up going on, <laughs> you're going to go on your phone and look for that shit. I mean, because it's like, yo, okay, I have to know if this is real. I have to know if this really happened. Yo, no, 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 you're calling your boys like, yo, did you see that? Yo, did you see this? Yo, I'm sending you this clip on IG. Yo, six boys, yo, all these guys just posted it. It, It's it's crazy right now. So, yeah, I did get watered down because it's like, but but as I'm saying that, it's like, it's it's sick because I can't lie. I'll listen to a lot of these guys and the fact rap is funny to me. It's just like, yo, this guy just said this about this guy. Holy shit. Like, if I see this, you don't roll. Like, that's definitely a fight. Like, <laughs> like it's one of those, you know? So it's like, it's crazy. Like, it's the the politics and the music, it, it runs deep because it's like, damn. Like, why do these guys want to kill each other so yeah. much for? Like, it, it doesn't like, make sense. It kind of reminds me of the whole, like, um, 
the fucking nice, uh, fuck guy, the Neficent situation. There's like an episode on Boondocks. Like it's like the first episode. Episode. Like, what did he do to make the nigga that mad? And all the, the, yeah, yeah, all the nigga moment. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and it's just like, yo, I think like that's just like with Toronto too, or like everywhere else too, because yeah. it could be like one minor thing, and then they proportion it to. That's literally what yeah, it is. Yeah, Toronto yeah. has nigga moments. Yeah, <laughs> literally, yo, that's yeah. crazy, bro. I like how you how you use that analogy. Still. Yeah, and I think that's just like kind of with the whole Toronto Canadian like music scene going on too, because I feel like everyone's just like one up one up like each other like in a way too and yeah. all that like, there yeah. is like that kind of like envy too and like now it's like at now everyone's like introducing each other to paperwork parties and all this other type of stuff too so yeah it is kind of construed like even with the whole like music scene going on and all the no yeah it's not it's no more punchlines anymore like that or i mean you still got one two rappers that do that but it's like to to be honest like even for me like i'm not like up there in the levels where like they're taking me in like on a Sue Surf or a Benny the Butcher to say because even Benny the Butcher that guy took it to a level where it's like he's mainstream now he's yeah. always been mainstream but it's like you have to be consistent in that professionalism to even get to a mainstream yeah. level because all this stupid shit as much as somebody could be good like you're not gonna make it unless yeah. like you know like see, look at Doovie and um press up yeah, Smiley like people, all yeah, these yeah, guys yeah. like they made it already you know as yeah. much as people want to hate, they already made it. So it's like, they they could do whatever the fuck they want yeah. and say whatever they want. People yeah. are still going to listen. But if you want to get to that point, you have to put in the work. You know what I mean? Yeah. yeah. I mean, there are like a lot of like Bennies and like also Sue Surfs out there and all that. It's yeah. just like, they're kind of unknown, but others like, they kind of are like low-key with it. Like there's um, an artist like named uh, Thelonious yeah. who has like a song with like Mick Jenkins and all that. Like is in yeah. the remix Silverstone, project. Silverstone, Rexdale. Yeah, Shout yeah. out Thelonious. Come on, And man. then Snacks as well too. I know he's like from Rochester. Shout but, out like, Snacks. I got a track yeah, yeah. of Snacks coming out too. Yeah, it's called yeah. LOX, Live Off Experience. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I'll give you guys a preview of that track too at the end of this. But yeah, yeah. Yeah, and I mean uh, Ghost by RJ and like, I mean John Cabongo. Like yeah. all of them are like are kind of like doing the thing too. So I do definitely see like that wave like coming up too. But like in terms of like Everything else, do you ever feel like there should be some changes on the scene? I mean, yeah. I mean, it would be blessed to see, like, gatherings of, like, you know, like, some type of hip-hop culture or something like that. I know in the States, they have, like, a school for rappers. Like, it's kind of like a secretive thing. I know from a long time ago, they've been having it. I hear about it time to time, but it's, like, one of those, like, it's kind of, like, dead now because, fuck, it was from back then. But... Yeah. It has to be, like, a community or something for, like, elite artists, you know? Not just rappers or anything, but just elite artists that want to just learn how to write better yeah. or get a flow better, you know? Fucking just even catch a vibe better in the studio and whatnot, right? Yeah. And I know there's people out here that are willing to help with that, but it's, like, out of genuine love, not just, oh, yo, I want to do this and make money off of it. It's like, yeah, cool, anybody yeah. could do that. Go build a studio on Young Street or freaking Queen Street West, whatever, and do your thing, yeah. you know? Yeah. But... It's more about a, like a genuine thing where I want to see like the community come together and do something where it's like, yeah. oh, okay, this is lit. And I think something could change if we all work together because look at the states, you know, regardless of ops and whoever dies and this and that, this and that, they still have contracts and deals and this and that where they have to come together and work. So, you know what I mean? It's, it's yeah. weird, it's crazy, but they make it work. Yeah. Down, down here, somebody has to catch it. Somebody has to get caught lacking. Yeah. Somebody has to... I mean, there's the remix project where, like, a lot of people were, like, on there. Jesse Reyes, like, Pillar B. Yeah. Like, uh, Felonious, like, was on there, too. Tara Lord. Um, I know there's, like, Rise and all that, too, where they yeah. have, like, in Scarborough. And, I was like, supposed to be there a long time ago. A couple oh. years ago. Like, a, a lot of years ago, actually. Yeah, yeah I remember yeah. when um, Pyrex and Moolah and all of them were there. Pillar and all of them. Yeah, I was supposed to be in that, that year, that class, but I had a whole bunch of other shit going on. So. Yeah. I mean, there's, like, still a chance to, like, to, like, even, like, be there. And, like, yeah. you know, there are, like, opportunities, like, for, like, a lot of artists, artists like, to take in, like, you know, going to the, sta to the States or, like, to Vancouver, Montreal and all that. And, like, Facts. tap in from there, too. Like, I know, like, uh, with um, Remix, like, they're close with, like, some people from Chicago, like, yeah. King Louie and, like, all those, like, people, too. So, yeah, exactly. that connectivity is, like, also, like, great either way and all the new, so. No, for sure. And... Like, as far as, like, you know, like, other stuff, too, like, just, like, even with music, um, I know, like, usually, like, I'll have, like, a playlist, like, for people, like, to tap in with, like, musically and all that, to, called, like, TOYs, like, Rising Ass, too, so, like, with, like, any free tracks, like, that you have, like, on Spotify, like, what can you recommend for people to check out so 
you know, we could like put that on the playlist or like they could like check it in like at the crib and all that. Yeah, so one track that I'll suggest, well, two tracks I'll suggest right now for everyone to play on my Spotify, iTunes, Apple Music, Deezer, Tidal, whatever it is. Um, that'll be Yellow Tape, produced by my boy Hunter Beats. You know what I mean? That's uh, Double H, you know, High Horseman Affiliates. You know what I mean? Uh, shout out Double H, also Double H Chase is my dogs. Another track that I got is uh called West Side, you know what I mean? Uh I got a feature on there with WW Larry. Shout out, shout out Ginger, you see what I'm saying? Uh also my boy Seven True on that, you know what I mean? So yeah, the West Side and Yellow Tape. Those are the two tracks to check out. Bangers, heaters, and we got videos dropping for them real soon. Stay tuned, you know what I mean? And lock in. Oh, for sure. And you have like no regrets or anything like that, right? Uh hell no. Nah. I mean, Nah, no regrets at all. I can't think about regrets. If I think about a regret, then tch. yeah, crash out. Can't nah. crash out. Yeah. <laughs> nah, I know what you mean. And like, aside from the TV show and like other other stuff going on, like, what do you have uh, next for the year? Like, in terms of like any projects or any stuff going on and so forth? And do you have any, oh, like, oh like, yes, actually, I got a performance. Um, what's that? August second, oh yeah, we got a performance August second with um Hood Baby Pepper. He's gonna be the headliner. Uh, I got my boy Malik, Twenty Three Dreams. Shout out Life of Dreamers, yo, for setting up the whole damn thing, you know what I mean? Shout out them for putting me on the show, too. Shout out Hood Baby Pepper. Shout out all the Hood Babies, you know what I mean? Um, Other than that, shoot, what else I got? It's just usually just shows that come up out of nowhere and whatnot. I just go to them, see what's going on. You got to send me, like, people got to send me a flyer and whatnot, but nothing coming up right now except for that one, you know what I mean? So that's August 2nd, Hood Baby Pepper live on... London, I think it's London, yeah, yeah, London, Club Fuego. Okay, okay, yeah, yeah. yeah, that's what's up. Like, I think like that show would definitely be dope. Like, I noticed like there is a good connectivity with like artists, like even like doing those shows too. And like, yeah, I think like it has like started like since like last year too, where like a lot of people from NLMG and like other platforms are like performing out there. And yeah. you know, it's like kind of like amazing to see for like people to uh, tap and perform from there. And yeah, you know? yeah, definitely, definitely, definitely. Yeah, definitely. Man. And do you have any like close remarks you'd like to say before we do the freestyle? Oh, uh, yeah, yeah, shout out my mama, I love you, you know what I mean? That's my old lady. Uh, <laughs> other than that, up life, stay connected, you get me? Uh, shout out Cuzzle, shout out Lavish, you know what I mean? Uh, who else, who else, yo? Shout out everybody that I get in, didn't get to shout out, but you don't know, so I love, you know what I mean? Shout out Yashu, Lens of Yashu, we live, we lit, we get it popping. Want to show you some bars right now. Other than that, yo, shout out the city, you know, I love Toronto, I love you, I love you, I love you. So always keep me in your arms, keep me close, and love me back. Is it? Yeah, man. Likewise, man. And, you know, we're definitely going to showcase the best, like, freestyle possible and all that, too. We have Valentino in the cut. Like, he's going to be doing, like, a lot of, like, instrumentals, like, a lot of, like, bars and everything else, too. Yeah. I'm going to step out. He's going to step in, spit some flames and all that. And, you know, we're going to get a problem right now, you know? Let's get it. Oh, this is what we got. All right. Get it popping, man. Uh-huh. Valentino, up life, stay connected. Yashu, I see you, my G. Huh? Let's go. Listen. She ain't one to entertain. Shorty out here breaking hearts. She gon' tell you that she's Gucci. Mama rockin' St. Laurent. You gotta understand the pain. Just don't take it to the mall. She'll act dumb and play the game. All she'll do is make a car. From the west end of Toronto. All my niggas came to ball. Hating on me ain't no good. She told me this a favorite song. Could be juggin' in the hood, but bro said, let's go take a shot. My bad for making you look good. I blame myself, girl. It's my fault. Didn't call me baby. Didn't say I love you till I came inside. You hit me with the maybe. I might call you, but I changed my mind. It might look dead to you, but every day I'm trying to stay alive. John knows this is streets. Shit just happens now. It ain't some. Hate her when they tables turn, love her when they size me up I told my barber I can't let a dirty bitch come line me up Niggas going live, DKM just don't come rise me up Cause deep down in your heart you're mad I'm who the fans think highly love Yeah, you must be smoking dick, booked and busy You get caught to show up just cause no one did Shorty dancing, all I do is post it with my cup Got the demons in the booth across like who want smoke with us I look good plus I'm on clown and that's why your girl knows what's up My wet might be automatic but my finger on my clutch Are you dumb? Hmm? Are you dumb? Come on, man, we really do this, my G. See what I'm saying? Yeah. Oh, that's what we doing now? All right, yo. When you think of me, you think of the sickest. Bar for bar, punchline therapist. But just wait till I kick it. Life is short. I heard that shit from a midget. I made my plug, my. After 
spades and a chicken Yo, switch it up, as if I'm making a difference Running game, I got res like who else could really play my position Changing flows after making the rhythm They gon' charge me with verbal harassment and try to take me to prison Picture perfect when it came to my image And respectfully, all these rappers are trash So don't say that I'm dissing I started trapping, then I made it a business I know Spotify don't give out big numbers So they make it a digit When you think of me, you think of the sickest Boss spitters from the six, you feel froggy, leap on a pad and rip it No free game, you gotta purchase a ticket These guys are broke, you can't get mad at these hoes Just cause they're working and stripping Even a good look could ruin your image Out here trying to do cartwheels with this bag Knowing you couldn't flip it Washed up, we know you wouldn't rinse it They say those who can't hear must feel it Boy, you should've listened Got ambitions as a rider Uh, yo, hold up, let me go New packs rip off the plastic Went up north to habits How these guys turn from boss to average You can't afford it, you don't got what it costs to have it I bought a stick then started waving it around like magic Uh, nothing in my pocket, couldn't find a wop Up early, five o'clock, cause fiends will only call you when it's time to shop Tag in the building, I turn all this pain into millions Smoking blunts, now I'm looking at the stars on the ceiling Dog food and product, with my stamps all on them Dad bags and capsules, I'd even give them Advil You had to get adjusted, and show these had no other choice but suck dick The feds did a sweep, I couldn't flush it Thinking about it, those are the best days On the phone with shorty while I'm picking all my clothes for the next day Lunch money turned into trap money And the dudes that I was cool with been starting to act funny These bitches wanna hit, I know that they want some bands from me And I don't mean to brag, but this ain't even rap money Ah, uh, yeah, looking up to all the dope boys known for cooking up You either get taken in, scarf for life or took up Stand firm like a man, beat it if they're pulling up Heartbreak I tell all these bitches don't come look for love Nah, what goes around comes around again You know the rules still remain the same from now to then Yeah, okay, hold up, I'm not done yet, I still got more Yo, listen, listen, yeah All my city feeds off is politics and waste suits Black pages and IG, look what it came to And I don't gotta call no names, but they think I'm still dissing She said I'm broke, but a friend to treat me like a meal ticket uh, Been cooling, time to time I get a little heated and I don't see these rappers, and I don't need to hear them, yeah Fact rap, these guys love to act bad Sit down and take a seat from someone you can't stand You won't hear the punchlines, you gotta feel the backhand My blunt hot, and the music is not, so dash that Toronto vibes, I'm drinking dragon and I'm spitting fire I love watching strippers dance cause I get inspired I told the whole city, break it like windy smoke And shorties sure gotta dance like DHQs in my videos You get smoked over nothing, so watch your head back the unexpected, you gotta expect that, huh? Say that then, my name ain't Icy, but I'm number one My ting will go off like Blicky, so watch your fucking tongue I've been lit, ask the plug, my back comes in interest I haul him shake inside a bad bitch, and then I dip set Even the young boys told me that they don't want smoke My OG said, God bless your lyricism John knows, my nigga doing 25 Moving like he's on road, my ex don't got a crib to stay in But this bitch just bought clothes I don't understand how these rappers can clout chase Acting funny over bitches, just send them a clown face Bad lyrics over a good beat will always sound great I come from cyphers, freestyle battles and underground tapes Like who are they, huh? Yeah, 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 sure man Respect cause it's done man, outside Stay connected, up like Yo, that was like the sickest like freestyle in a minute, you know? Yeah, I'm not yeah, gonna yeah. lie, that has been sick, you know, like either way too, you know? Yo, I don't think like man. there's like anything like that could like top that for the year and all that too But yo, Valentino, like that was like sick man, you know? Like that like respect. lives up to your name either way too and Yo, we'll definitely like see more soon and all that too with the music and all that, you know, so. Appreciate you, my guy. Yeah, man. Likewise, wish nothing but the best for you and like we'll definitely tap in and get no so either way. But yo, this is Josh, also known as Yeshu, episode 93 of the TOY Talks podcast. You can get this on all platforms, Spotify, Apple Podcasts, YouTube, Buzzsprout, much more, the Patreon as well too. Like once it's up, you'll definitely check out the freestyle by itself too and the interview with the freestyle as well too for the podcast. And yeah, man, check out Valentino's music. You know, he's been sick. Be performing in August and all that, you know. The TV show's coming up, the show, like the project coming up too. Yeah, so, yeah, yeah. August 2nd, man. Her baby Pepper, man. Holla at me for the tickets. I get that online. You know what I mean? Life of Dreamers. Shout out. Likewise, likewise. And yo, this is episode 93. Josh, also known as Yashu, with Valentino signing off, you know. Yeah.